All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Um, yes, please like this video and share it with anybody else you think is awake because I'm about to talk about how to make money in the economy or in a stock market, even in an uncertain economy. So you all tell me real quick in the chat, what do you think is the biggest problem right now, or maybe even your biggest fear um, with the economy and the overall stock market right now? So are you afraid of coronavirus cases, um, the presidential election, the um, stimulus uncertainty being in limbo? Which one do you think will most impact the economy right now? I know all of those things are kind of uncertain. Which one is your, your biggest, biggest fear or the thing that you think is most uncertain? Thank you, Kevin. So Kevin says election. Jose says nothing. Really? You don't think any of those things? Douglas says all of the above. Desi says no fear. Okay, good. So you're not afraid, but what do you think? Hey, Chris. Chris says election. Stimulus election. Yep. Yep. And then tell me this. What personally do you think all of these uncertainties will, how, how will they personally impact you? So, you know, maybe you, would you get sick from coronavirus? Um, maybe job, not having enough hours. How will this, all of this uncertainty personally impact you? Good. And Wanda says, I want to know what to do to invest successfully. No fear. Great, you're in the right place. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. How do you successfully invest even during this? And good, I see AF says unemployment, S5 unemployment, yep. The last time we had um, high, like a high spike in coronavirus cases, many people lost their jobs. So unemployment was extremely high, is still extremely high. So now you got to figure out, well, how do I supplement my income, right? How do I make sure that everything keeps running, even if they furlough me? Or what if I have to take time off because I'm sick? And I had many of my students. So I'm Terry Gioma, just to introduce myself real quick, and I'll, I'll do it more in the, the full web webinar. But I'm Terry Gioma, and I'm the founder of an investing school called Trade and Travel. And we have over 3,500 students in the course. So I teach over 3,000 people on a regular basis how to invest successfully in the stock market. And we focus mainly on stocks and options. And we're active investors. We're investing for income. Our, our goal is to help you supplement your income as if it was a side hustle. You're going to be investing in stocks as if it was a side hustle. And eventually you can be like me. And if you want to replace your income with investing. So that's kind of what I do. That's my bread and butter. That's I'm a, a day and swing trader. I'm a trader all day, every day. <laughs> um, yes, shout out to trade and travel. And the reason why I say that is because I have students from all walks of life. And I see some of you guys in the chat are talking about like getting sick would be a real thing that could impact your life right now. And I actually have several students that got coronavirus and they were trading while they were in, in bed because, you know, like you get really tired. Um, I had a couple others who had losses in their family because of coronavirus, but it helped them sustain the family. So I know that it's important for you guys to learn this skill set. And that's why I really want to teach you all tonight so that you know how to invest to supplement your income and keep things going afloat, even when the economy is uncertain. All right. So y'all with me, y'all ready to learn some stuff? <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. And you all let me know if you can see it because I'm actually in Zoom. So I want to make sure that you guys can still see. But if I share my screen, are you all able to see my presentation? And I'm going to share it real big. It seems like it's taking a little minute, but can you can you guys see that? 
Hold on. Now I can't see you. Hold on. <laughs> Hope you can see. Let me double check. Somebody on Instagram, tell me if you can see the slides on YouTube so I can make sure that they're there. But it's Trade and Travel with Terry Gioma. And tonight we're going to talk about how to make money in the stock market and avoid the uncertainty of the economy. And I will tell you the truth. It is worth staying all the way to the end of this presentation because I did add a really great gift to everybody who stays to the end of the presentation. So let's go. And someone says, no, ma'am. Okay, someone else says, I can see it. Oh, shoot. Okay, let's see. Let me just double check real quick. YouTube, can y'all see the slides? Okay, good. Everybody's saying yes. Perfect. All right, let's go. <laughs> Let me come back and share them again. I just had to make sure that y'all could see. Present. All right. All right, so tell me in the chat, this is gonna be really interactive. I know that it's it's late and I want you guys to be engaged. So tell me how, how would an extra $200 a day impact your life? And I love seeing this first because I like to see um, where everybody is. Like what would an extra $200 a day do for your life? And if anybody's thinking that that's not a lot of money, that's actually, well, there's five trading days in a week. So that's actually an extra $1,000 a week four thousand dollars a month just for making an extra two hundred dollars a day and then that's an extra forty eight thousand dollars a year just from the extra two hundred dollars a day so what would that do to your life if you could make an extra two hundred dollars a day yes and i'm seeing i can get out of debt what else car payment nice nice buy a home exactly and someone says pay it all off yes yes and so for me it was travel i wanted to travel around the world so by making an extra 200 dollars a day i actually could um, replace my income it was really 300 dollars, but 200 dollars, i could still live real good um, with an extra 200 dollars a day i could replace my income as an assistant principal and travel the world so that was my big thing if i could make 200 dollars a day then i would travel and it's not just me i also have other students who 200 dollars a day changed their life too so this is alex and selenia and for them it brought them quality time so not only with um, each other, because they actually were living in separate cities. So what was so cool, and I didn't even know this until afterwards, but they were living in separate cities, but they were married because Selenia had a really great job as a lawyer. She was a corporate lawyer. And then Alex had a really great job too, but he had had his job had given him like a promotion and moved him to a different city, but she couldn't leave because she had to stay in her job. So they had to be long distance until she found a way to replace her income. And she was able to do that trading. So she finally was able to start, they were able to live in the same city. And then not only that, she sent me this sweet, sweet text message because she was also able to start spending more time with her family. So if you see down here, she says, I want to share a special moment with you. I was able to go see my little nephew dance at his school assembly yesterday. He performed a traditional dance from Chile. And then she says, this was very special because I used to have a crazy demanding workload and hours when I worked in big law. I wasn't typically able to make it to his school functions. And now I can. Thank you again, Terry. So extra $200 a day brings quality time. And and I do want to say from the beginning, because I know everybody who's here is probably like, man, when is she going to tell us that this is a whole bunch of money? Nope, you don't have to have a lot of money to invest. So we'll just take that off the table from the beginning. This is another one of my students, Carleen and her family. And you can see here that when she first started, she's been in the course now for a little while. But when she first started, she started with $187. But if you look at her profit, she made $20 off of the $180. So that's actually 11% return, 11.9% return on the amount that was in her account. And she says, 
a quick and small profit on XLV, still practicing cautiously. Any profit is a good profit. But just imagine as she continues to grow her account, now she has this skill set. So she'll be able to make more and more income. And for some of you guys, like an extra $100 a week would be nice. And $20 a day is $100 a week. So there you go. You don't have to have these blowout numbers to really impact your life. And I'll show you this because this is like um, an, an excuse me an account that I was trading versus an versus a student's account. So in this student's account, she was trading Teladoc, and she says first successful live sale, bought four shares of Teladoc, and she like goes through the whole thing. But you guys see here, she had made eighty dollars on nine hundred and eighty six dollars, but that's an eight percent return, an eight point eight percent gain. Um, versus over here, I was trading and I made $68,000 in a day, which of course is great. That's like great money, but look at the account size. So my return is actually only 4.7% gain. So it's not about the amount of money all the time. It's about the gain and the percentage gain in investing. So no matter what account size you're starting with, you can still have really profitable days and you can still do really well. Does that make sense? I just want you guys to know, even from the jump, that it's not about how much money you have. It's about how you work that money that you have. Okay? And especially right now in these uncertain times, I know that there's some people that your biggest concern with investing is that you don't have enough money to start. And I just want to knock that, that concern away now. You have enough, no matter if you're starting with $180, $900, or a million dollars, you have enough. It's just about how you work that. And if you're on this call, what are you probably wondering? You're probably wondering some of these things. Is now the right time for me to invest? Y'all put a one in the chat if any of these things are you. Um, if you're wondering, is now the right time for me to invest? Put a one in the chat. What about if I never invested before, is it possible for me to actually make money in the stock market? Wondering that. What about what should I even invest in? I don't know where to start. Put a one in the chat if that's you. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to invest in. <laughs> and then that other question of how much do I need to get started? I don't think I have enough money. And we just touched on that one a little bit, right? Like you have enough. No matter where you're starting, you have enough. Now we just got to teach you how to do it right so you don't lose your, your starting amount, right? All right. So now here are the four secrets that I'm going to cover with you tonight. The first one, and I switched up the order a little bit. I might even switch it again. But the first secret is the number one way you can protect your investments and make money even if the market goes down, right? So that's important, especially now that's important. Second secret how to trade stocks at an unfair advantage, even if you've never invested before. Then we're going to talk about the top five investing mistakes all new traders need to avoid. What are those mistakes? How do we get away from them? And then secret number four is how you can make $1,000 a day without spending your entire day online monitoring your trades. Your time is valuable, right? So how do we get you away from the computer and able to do other things? How do you work a full job and still trade? So we'll talk through that. All right. And why this is important for you right now, I think all of you guys know the answer to this. It's because we've seen that in coronavirus come this year and it has impacted us in ways we never would have imagined before. And now we're realizing more than ever that we don't have as much control over our money as we thought we did. And not just our money, we don't have control over pretty much anything <laughs> um, as much as we, we thought we did. And so now more than ever, it's important for us to start getting our finances in order and learning how to make this money grow, learning how to not be on someone else's time schedule, learning how to take control of our life back, right? That's why this is important for you right now. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be out of control. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. So imagine if you were in control of your own situation and didn't have to worry about a boss calling you into a last minute meeting, risking your health as an essential worker, too much time away from your loved ones. And we all know this list goes on and on and on. <laughs> Just imagine if it was better than that. 
And then what if, imagine if you knew how to invest your paycheck, stimulus check, unemployment, or even your 401k to consistently make money in the stock market with confidence. And I know some of you guys, many of you guys that are following me, you're making money right now. But the thing is, are you doing it consistently? How do we get you consistent so that you can actually, um, you can feel confident in being able to rely on it as a source of income? And then this is what happened to me. So I, um, I was, a couple things were the turning point for me to actually start investing full time. One of them was my friend John passing away. And um, this is a picture here um, of our crew. We had like a really awesome crew in Chicago. When I first graduated from college, I, uh, I went to MIT and then I moved to Chicago right after that. And this was like my friend group. And it's so funny because now like things are coming back full circle and it's just it's just a blessing that I had this cool crew. But one of the one of the people you will see in every single picture next to me was John, because John like John was just amazing. He was always happy and joyful. And he was like that ride or die. He was always like ready for whatever. Like, OK, John, you want to go here? Yeah. You want to try out this new restaurant? Yeah, let's go. You know, like just always like the best. And one day when I was going to work, I started getting this um, like this line of text from our friend group. And it was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Hard morning. Um, could, can't believe this. And have you ever had your phone just blow up? And you're wondering, like, what is going on? Like, why are they all talking? And so that was happening that morning. And I was actually on my way to work. Um, and come to find out that John had passed away. But I couldn't even deal with it at the time because I was going to work, like literally on my way to the school building where I was an assistant principal. And this job was like the job from hell. And like it just it just was <laughs> like my boss had quit two weeks before I started. So I never really got trained. Then we had to work all the time. I, I was assistant principal, but I was one of the founding principals. So like we got no break what summer what what are you talking about summer mm, I don't even know what you're talking about like weekends oh who has weekends oh you you work until midnight just midnight what about 2 a.m like it was just ridiculous like we worked all the time and then on top of that I had like petty bosses and I didn't just have one I had four so I had two on the operation side of like how the school was running and then I had two bosses from the education side making sure that we had everything for the kids but like one first of all they never agreed on anything which was crazy and then I had one of them who was just super petty so like I remember um like like this is the biggest memory I have like we did this like I did this big project decorating the school because I was over the op operations of the school. So I had put all these banners up. Mind you, I had like ordered the banners, finally got my um, janitor and I to put all the banners up. They're looking good. I'm excited for the kids to see it. She comes and she mad. And I'm like, why are you mad? What is, I didn't tell to her like that, of course, because I was scared of her. So I was like, I'm sorry. Um, I heard that you're not really enjoying operations. Like what's wrong? <laughs> Of course, that's how I said it. And then, um, but in my head, I was like, why is she mad? This is beautiful. What's wrong? With okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> but the point is, she told me that the reason why she was mad and didn't like what I did was because one thumbtack was a different color than all the other thumbtacks. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, all this effort that we done put into this and the fact that one thumbtack is the wrong color. Are you kidding me? And then the thing was, I, like, it was probably my janitor. He just ran out of thumbtacks. It wasn't like he tried to have the wrong color. Like, he just went through intentionally through all of the thumbtacks and picked the wrong one. Like, no, like, <laughs> that wasn't even a thing. But literally, she told the whole district that she didn't like my ops because of stuff like that. Just pettiness. So anyway, if anybody else, I feel I feel like I needed a moment there. But if anybody else has been in a situation that crazy, like that's where I was. I was underpaid, unappreciated, um, misunderstood, not satisfied, just in a horrible work environment. And then on top of all this, my friend just passed away. So at this point, I'm just like, no, I can't do this anymore. Life is too short. 
I could be gone tomorrow and I'm in this, this horrible situation. I've got to get an exit strategy. So that's when I started studying trading for like really intentionally. Up until this, I had done it as a side hustle. Like I went to MIT and I interned on Wall Street at Morgan Stanley. So I knew about investing, but I just hadn't gone down that route for my job. So I had done it like as a side hustle for some time, but it wasn't until 2016 going into 2017 that I said, I'm going to start doing this all the time. I'm going to buckle down study. I'm going to practice every day. I'm going to make it so that I can use this to, to leave this place because they can kick rocks and I'm about to kill one of these kids and I'm going to punch this lady in the face. I didn't say all that. Once again, that was what I thought in my head, but I didn't act like that at the school. I was really nice. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> y'all, I'm silly and it's, it's late. But anyway, so I finally was able to leave the school and I started traveling full time. And I was just trading and traveling. And this is like me in Australia. I finally made it to Australia, which was on my bucket list. And um, I traveled everywhere. So I was in first place I went when I left the school was I went to. Um, uh, oh, hold on. Let me see. Let me zoom out so y'all can see it. But I went over here on the right hand side to China. So I was in um, South Korea for a month, Vietnam for a month, Thailand for a month. I got to visit Japan because every place I'd also do like a side trip. Then from there, I went over here to Australia, over here, then came back home and did a class. This was my first trade and travel class in the States. I While I was gone, people started asking me, well, how are you affording to travel? And I would tell them, oh, I'm trading stocks. And so the, the people I was traveling with, well, they were like, please teach us. So I taught one class in Thailand, and then they, they loved it. And actually, I enjoyed teaching it, too. So I was like, it, once again, I'm going to tell you some of my back thoughts and then I'll tell you my real thoughts. So I told them, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to do it one time. But in the back of my head, I was kind of like, that was fun. If they ask me again, I might do it. So lo and behold, they asked me again. And in, <laughs> and in Vietnam, we did another class, but I still was kind of on that. I don't want to be in education anymore. This is me living my best life. I ain't going to teach no classes. Lo and behold, came back to the United States and I was finishing up my master's degree in, at seminary and seminary. And one of the classes you can see, this is what the room looked like. So this is Dallas Theological Seminary. My right after my last final, I asked them, can I borrow a classroom? Because my friends keep asking me to teach them how to trade. And so I told my friends, OK, fine. They gave us a classroom. Come and look at the room. The room was packed. We had 71 people between here and then I had some other friends that wanted to know about it. So they actually I said, OK, fine, I'll do an online thing for you. They came to online. So it was super cool. And honestly, this is the first time I, I saw God move in this whole thing and was like, I can't believe like, OK, something's happening here. Um, but fast forward now I have like a whole school for trade and travel. This is me making $20,000 on the beach in Mykonos in Greece. Like it just, it's, it's been great. And I hope that you guys get a chance to do this too, because it's, it really is just freeing. So once again, my goal during today is to help reveal four secrets to you to investing in the stock market to stay afloat and supplement your income. And then I'm going to share some pro tips about investing, especially right now during economic uncertainty. And then I'm going to share how you can work alongside me and learn how to make money in the stock market with confidence. So if you need some help, I'll show you how to do that too. We covered the secrets before, but here they are one more time. How to protect yourself, how to trade at an unfair advantage, how to avoid mistakes, and then how to do this without spending all your time in front of the computer. So y'all ready for the secrets? Hope y'all are here. Press like and press share. Um, let's go. So, secret number one. <laughs> I hope y'all allow me to be a little silly too, because once again, it's late and I, I, I can. 
No, I'm just playing. <laughs> anyway, okay, so secret number one, the number one way you can protect your investments and make money, even if the market goes down. And I put this one as number one, because especially right now during economic uncertainty, I think you guys need some tools to help protect yourself and even some tools to help actually make money during this season. So the first one is some of you probably feel the stock market is such a gamble. And many of the students that I've worked with have felt this exact same way. So you are not alone. But the truth is that you do have control. Some people think, oh, you have no control of your losses, right? But that's not right. You do have control. That is completely false. The way that we have control, <laughs> graphics are fun. <laughs> The way that we have control is by planning ahead of time. Everybody needs a trading plan. And that's like one of the biggest things that I teach my students in my class is putting together a trading plan. But part of that trading plan is you have to plan where you will enter and where you will exit a trade. That is extremely important. One of the things that I, I'm pretty sure happened today and many days when the market goes down is there are some people who lost money because they didn't have an exit strategy. They just got into a stock because they thought that it was a good stock, but they had no plan on how to exit the trade. That already sets you up for failure. So this is how we're going to make sure that you're thinking about your reward and your risk ahead of time. And it's called a reward to risk ratio. You're going to plan where you're entering and you're going to plan where you're exiting. And you're going to make sure that your reward on the trade is three times your risk. OK, and I'm, I'm of course, this is a, a short hour, so I can't teach you everything. But one thing I can teach you is one of the ways to protect yourself and to make sure that you have the risk part of this in place is by putting in a stop limit or excuse me, stop market order. It's called a stop um, order type. All right. So what is a stop? What does it do? So a stop loss order, it protects you from losing when your stocks are falling. So if your stocks are falling super fast, this stop will, you'll hit that level and it'll get you out of the trade so that you don't lose any more money. And it's kind of like this, like if you look here, this is me on the zip line. So I'm going down, going down, going down. And then I hit this buoy right here and it stops the momentum all the way so that I don't hit the platform. So I don't you know, kill myself. This was me in Puerto Rico flying through the mountains. I wish I was still there now. I'm going to need Corona to, to go somewhere. But anyway, um, this, was, <laughs> this was me in Puerto Rico. And that buoy like automatically stops you from, from moving. Anybody else in here been zip lining and you like know what I'm talking about? You're going down super fast and then all of a sudden this thing stops you. Well, that's what a stop loss does in trading. If your stocks are going down against you, they will you will hit that stop and get you out of the trade. And what's cool about this is if you are able to put a stop in, then you know how to protect yourself from losing and you also know what your risk is. So now you can calculate, all right, if my risk is $300, I need to be in trades that only profit me at least three times that amount. So I need to be in trades that are going to give me at least $900 because the I have the ability to lose $300. So this is only worth it if the reward is three times this $300 I'm about to lose. Does that make sense? So you're going to make sure you have a three to one reward to risk ratio, which we do using charts. Of course, I could show you more in trade and travel. But the key is you're going to have to put stops into all of your trades. And this, though, is something that you can do for all of your accounts, even if you're like maybe you're self-directing an IRA and it's a longer term retirement account, you still can put in some stop loss orders to protect you. So if we do get the market dropping like it did in March from coronavirus, you'll be protected and you won't lose everything. So one thing I encourage you guys to do is try to go in and manually add stops to all of your positions. Now, um, I know some of you guys that scares you because you're like, well, what if it hits the stop? I'll be out. But you got to start thinking about it as a bad thing. It's protecting you like this is like your insurance, your safety net. You should be so thankful that your stop got hit because there's a possibility the stock could have kept falling. All right. So go in and add them to all of your positions. If you're in a position for the long term, you don't have to put the stop close. It can be further down. 
And if it's further down, that's fine. But now you at least know, though, that that if everything falls apart, you won't lose everything. OK, so that's one one tip that you can do easily right now to start protecting yourself from losing. Now, someone I'm sure is going to ask, well, Terry, how do we know where to put it? Of course, like I could tell you more like in a course, there's a lot that goes into that. I use charts to figure out where I put my stop. We look at like where the banks are buying and then put the stop below that. But no matter what, just try to put something in to protect yourself. And it's a stop loss. All right. Now, one other tip is short selling. So you can also make money when the market goes down and it's called short selling. So there's ways to protect yourself putting in stops, but there's also ways to make money as the market goes down. And we can, and I can teach you how to do that too. But today I was actually like at an appointment, um, I'm doing self-care. So I went to like this, I don't know, it's like a hydration appointment so you can be hydrated, I guess. Um, <laughs> I tried it. We're going to see what happens if I feel anything different. But I was talking to the lady there and she was like, but Terry, you know, are you sure that now's the right time to invest? And I told her, well, I can make money on the way down. And she looked, she said, what? Yes, <laughs> you can make money on the way down. So it's it's definitely something to learn. And we'll talk about it a little more in, in the next section. But does this make sense that putting in a stop loss to set your risk will actually help you calculate higher probability trades? Because if you know your risk, then you can know if a trade is even worth taking because you can calculate your reward. Then it's no longer a gamble because now it's a calculated trade. And if you know that, then that leads to far less risky trades because once again, it's a calculated trade now. Does that make sense? Y'all put a, put a yes in the chat if it's making sense. And then this is um, one of my students. This is actually my, my first student. His name is Ray. Um, oh, man, Raymond. And like, it's so fun. I love seeing his face because he just reminds me of like how far I've come because he was the very first student. Like after that class I showed you, he was the first one to pay me for the online program. In that class, I said, I, I was making it up because I didn't have it at the time. I said, if you want to learn more about investing, I have a course that can teach you and it's, you know, blah, 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 amount of money. And I thought nobody was going to buy it. So I was just throwing it out there because I had heard like a, a webinar and somebody said, well, you tell them you have a course. So I, I said at the end, I have a course. And I'm thinking like, again, no one's going to buy it. Raymond was my first student. So it's it's fun to see his face. But if you see the text message right there and it says, hey, Terry, just wanted to show you how your class affected my week, avoiding those five mistakes. Like I had taught him five mistakes. One of them was not putting in stops. So he says, avoiding those five mistakes and not being greedy paid off. I'm ready for next week to see if I can stay consistent. Thanks again. So you guys see how his chart now is going up and like how much of a big impact that it had in his life. So putting in risk management, and like I have several different things that I teach my students on how to protect themselves. Stocks is just one part of a bigger risk management plan, but having risk management will help you to um, start seeing change in your portfolio. Because first you gotta protect yourself. Then you can start making money. All right, so let's keep going. Secret number two. Um, Y'all gotta be with me, right? Y'all still with me? Everybody still here? Um, <laughs> yeah, I got to keep me energy. I'm going to feed off of your energy. So keep me energized. Let's go. Um, so secret number two, how to trade stocks at an unfair advantage, even if you've never invested before. Let me make sure this is recording. How to trade stocks at an unfair advantage, even if you've never invested before. So first of all, what, like, I know you think that this section is going to be something super, super intuitive or super just, oh my gosh, like this is something new and I've never heard this before. Um, and it is, I'm going to share some stuff with you that is new, but I also want to share some stuff with you that is old and the old pieces. Step one is you got to pick the right companies and I feel like, not even I feel like, I know because I've seen so many students, one of the reasons why 
you're losing is because you picked the wrong company to start. We're not searching for as, as active investors and professional investors, we're not searching for the diamond in the rough, that one company that nobody knows about, that penny stock that is three cents and it's going to go to a million. That is not what we're looking for. If you want consistent income on a regular basis, I want you to pick good companies that are healthy, that will be around for years. They might be a little bit more expensive dollar wise, but those are the ones that are actually going to benefit you and give you that consistent income in your portfolio. We're not looking for the ones that nobody knows about. No, as traders, we want high volume. We want the best in breed. So we're going to be looking for what's the best company in every sector. And those are the ones that we're going to go after. Okay. And one of the tools that I want you to download to do this is CNBC. I want you to download it on your cell phone. It has a cell phone app. So download it on your cell phone. And then once you put it on your cell phone, I want you to actually do a, a watch list, put a watch list together. And the watch list is going to have all the companies in it that you like. But here's the thing. I want you to not only put the company you like, but I want you to put several other companies that compete with it in your watch list. So what does that mean? Okay, Terry, so I'm thinking about semiconductors. I like AMD. That's my favorite semiconductor company. Okay, so this is me talking to you. I'm talking to myself right now because this is a presentation. But <laughs> I'd be like, okay, what other companies do you have in, uh, in that sector? And so you might say, okay, well, AMD does, does chips and NVIDIA does chips and um, Intel does chips. And when we're, uh, what I'm talking about when I say chips is not potato chips. I'm talking about the chips that go into like cell phones and computers so these are all all chip semiconductor like they're all chip companies. So AMD, Nvidia, and you could even say Microsoft, put that one in that bucket. But what I'd want you to do is I'd want you to put all three of those together on your watch list. And this is like a special tip. If you start organizing your watch list so that companies that are similar are together on your watch list, you're going to start seeing some trends. And it's just like a, a little pro tip, um, but they, uh, there's certain companies that will trade together. For example, um, what other companies trade together? Of course, you, the FANG company, so like Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google. Sometimes they're a little out of sync, but often they trade together because they're in the same ETF. Um, you might also see like Adobe and Salesforce often trade together. Why is that? Because they're also in the same ETF. All of them are actually in XLK together. Um, so you might see that all those start trading together. Or you might see that, of course, you got actually Visa would oftentimes moves in the same sense as, yeah, Visa moves in the same sense as Adobe and Salesforce. And you may say, why? They're such different companies. But actually, Visa is in several ETFs with Salesforce and Adobe. So those are going to move together too. And the, of course, Visa will move with, Microsoft, uh, with MasterCard. But whatever companies are similar, if you put them together on your watch list, you'll start seeing trends. But not only that, you'll see which one of those is the best company. So say, for example, you put those three semiconductor companies together on your watch list. And then you say, which one of these moves the most on a good day and the least on a bad day? Start watching that over a week and you'll start seeing some patterns and you'll be able to pick the best. That's how we, we say the best in breed. You'll be able to pick the best one in each sector. And that's the one I want you to invest in. Rewatch the replay if you didn't understand what I said. Okay. But <laughs> start organizing your watch list, and then I want you to start picking the best companies in each sector. All right? That's how you're actually going to start making money. And you guys up there understand too? Cool. And then there's several other things on picking good companies, but it all starts with picking healthy companies that are the best companies in their sector. Then from there... Um, oh, a couple other pro tips for the pandemic. During the pandemic, during coronavirus, I do not want you to invest in companies that are overall unhealthy. 
What do you mean, Terry? What do you mean? So there are several companies right now that are extremely impacted by coronavirus, extremely impacted, like the travel companies. All of hospitality is impacted. All of the um, movie companies are impacted. All of the airlines are impacted. And they're impacted to the point that they don't have customers. They don't have revenue. Their debt is going up. And right now, their stock prices are really low. And as a longer-term investor, you've probably always been told, buy low, sell high. We still want to do that. But some companies are no longer good companies at all. And those are, as a trader with someone trying to make income, I don't want you to go after those right now. I'd rather you go after the great companies that because the market fell, they're coming down. Those are the ones I want you to go after. So like when Amazon starts coming down to a lower price, buy that one. When, you know, when Salesforce and Adobe, I'm saying these, these same ones, but when they come down, buy those. If Zoom decides to come down, buy it. Buy the healthier companies, not the ones that are super impacted by Corona. All right. And then I want you to start thinking about what companies will thrive during the pandemic, because after the initial shock of all of the stocks falling, the, uh, the good companies that actually are making money during the pandemic, they're going to start rising again. We saw that in March and then we may see it again now with a more uncertain economy again. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about gaming companies, te technology companies telehealth, and then also virtual meetings. Anything virtual will do well right now. Even if it's um, DocuSign, it doesn't have to be necessarily a meeting like Zoom. It could, be, it could be signing a document virtually as well. So think about those companies that are going to thrive. And then when they have a bad day, you're going to be looking to get into some of those too. So that's just pro tips, right, on how to pick good companies. Random other pro tip is you can also see who's hiring. A lot of times companies will tell you, we're about to hire 3,000 new people because clearly their business is doing really well. So that's also another pro tip on another way to find companies that are healthy. You can also look at earnings. Like there's lots of other things, but just want to, on the surface level, make sure you're looking for healthy companies. Now, um, We've talked about this. You're going to invest in value companies that are best in quality. You're going to buy stocks that are on an uptrend, but just having a bad day. And then this is the last piece in secret number two. How are you going to afford those more like more high value companies? And the way that I do it and that I teach my students to do it is we use something called margin. And I know this is highly controversial. A lot of people will say don't use margin, but we have margin accounts. And what is a margin account? A margin account is where you get to trade with the bank's money. The bank will give you up to four times your cash amount, right? So many people used to think that you needed a lot of money to invest, but it's not true because you can use these margin accounts and you don't have to invest in penny stocks. So let me show you what margin looks like a little more in depth. So if you have $500, but... This is just showing you four times the cash amount. It really, for a trade, trade station, which is my broker, it starts at 2000 So you do have to have at least $2,000 in the account for them to give you margin. So this one is just an example, 500 to 2000 <laughs> Um, And then if you have $5,000, that's $20,000 that you'd get to trade with. And... This one's just wrong. I think if this was multiple choice, this one ain't right. It's, if it was 50,000, it would be 200,000, not 500,000. But do you guys see kind of how it's multiplying? It's like amplifying the ability that you have to buy stock. Now, somebody's going to say, but Terry, you know, if you use some, so much money, how are you going to protect yourself? Well, that goes back to what we just talked about in secret number one. We're still putting in our stops. We're making sure that we're calculating our risk. We're calculating our reward to risk. So you still have to have a risk management plan and you have to have even more diligent risk management plan if you're using margin. But that doesn't mean that you can't use it. And this will allow you to invest in a couple more healthy companies. Do you have to use it? No. Margin is something that will just sit in your account like a, um, like a line of credit on a house. So if you've ever had a house and then you have to do some improvements, the bank sometimes will give you a line of credit. 
if you use it, then you have to pay an interest on it. If you don't use it, it just sits there. And that's the same thing as a margin account in stocks. So it's our little secret. All right, a couple things about margin. Yes, margin is risky. And if you lose money with the banks, like if you're in a trade and you lose money, it comes out of your cash side, right? And if you lose more than the cash you have, they will do something called a margin call. But like I said, it's important to learn the risk management piece. And then that will help you with this. The bank does charge a small interest on margin. Uh, for TradeStation, it's like 0.03%, like something super small. So we calculated it that for every $10,000 of margin we use, they charged us $3 a day. So it's really a very low amount, but you just know that like it's not meant for you to hold it long term. It's meant for you to do quicker trades, like a day trade, and then you can get out of it and then you'll be able to do a different trade. And then one other thing that is important about margin, though, and why I do encourage you to get a margin account, even if you're not using it, is remember when I was telling you you can make money on the way down? You can only do that with a margin account. So there's like limits to what you can do in trading unless you have the right tools. One of the right tools is the right account. So I use a brokerage called TradeStation. I highly recommend them. But if you need, if you're wanting to be able to do shorting, which is making money on the way down, then make sure you open a margin account. All right. All right. Anybody learning today? You learning something you didn't know before? You're like, wait, what? Okay, I need to go open the right account. Yep. It's just like the difference between a checking and a savings account. It's just if you want to make an an interest or a bigger return, you get a savings account. So it's just a different type of account, but you got to know to ask is you just won't get the same features in a checking account. So you won't get the same features in a cash account versus margin account for traders. And then here's an example of how that works. So this is Miss Baylor. She's one of my students. And she had sent me an email that she made $12,000 in less than 12 days. And in our class, it's no picture, no proof. So she sent me the pictures and this is how it goes. So she had invested... And oh my gosh, like when it's so cool. So this is like the benefit of being an investor for some time. Like you get to see the progression of the market. So at the time that she did this trade, TTD was $198. Y'all, TTD recently was at $600. So I can just imagine if she over time had kept trading this. And somebody might say, well, she could just bought and hold it. Yeah, she could, but at the same time, it didn't go to 600 till just a couple months ago. So she could make money like she did. I'm about to show you all this trade. She could have made money over and over again and then made some money when it went up to $600. So she got into TTD, it was 198 and she bought 26 shares. Y'all see this in the middle? She bought 26 shares at $663. And, um, or excuse me, no, she bought 26 shares at the 198. And then by the time she sent me this screenshot, she had made $663. But the point that I want you to look at is how much it cost her to take this trade. So it cost her $5,141. You guys see that? So for her to buy 26 shares of Teladoc, I mean, excuse me, of TTD, which is Trade Desk, and that there, if anybody's wondering what the Trade Desk is, the Trade Desk is a marketing company. So they're the thing that helps you have ads on your cell phone. So that's why they're doing so well during coronavirus. But so the Trade Desk, she bought 26 shares and they were it was worth $198. So it would have cost her $5, $5,141 to buy this trade or to get into this trade. But then when you look at her account, look at how much she actually has in the account. So if you look down at the bottom, the account net worth at the beginning of the day was only $2,600, $2,652. Y'all see that? And then once she had that profit of $663, it was $3,326. So you may be wondering, if she only got $3,000 in her account, how does she afford to buy that or to get into this trade for $5,000? And it was because she used a little bit of her margin. She had extra buying power that could allow her to take this trade, even though she had less money in the account. So that's what I mean when saying 
it's cool to have a margin account because that will allow you to get in, afford some of the more expensive stocks, even if your account size is smaller. And it's not like, once again, it's not like we broke the bank. This was, she had 26, she needed an extra 26-ish to take the trade. So she was able to use it, 2,600. So it's not like, once again, it's not like she's using huge numbers and, oh my God, Terry, why are you teaching them this? No, like this is something you guys need to know is out there. Other people know about it. So you guys should know too, right? So, and by the end of this trade, she had actually made $889 and the realized profit means this is when she sold it. So she made a 33% return on this trade. She started out with $2,600. She made $889 on this trade. And now her account's at $3,550. That's a 33% return on that trade, which is excellent. That's so much better than the market's usually giving you 8 to 10%, right? So that's how we're making bigger returns. And our students are all trying to make the $1,000 in a day club. So that's how we're able to do it. We're using margin accounts. So does this make sense? You use a margin account and that will help you afford value companies and that will give you a better return than penny stocks or those random companies that you're trying to find that nobody else knows about. No. Mm -mm. Nope. Okay. I think you get the point. <laughs> okay, last <laughs> secret number three. Two more secrets. We're almost there. So secret number three, the top five investing mistakes all new traders need to avoid. Yes. <laughs> and you guys still with me? Let me see you in the chat. Put uh, Actually, let me know on this one. Tell me, so which of these mistakes is you? I want you to put, that's me in the chat if one of these is you. So investing without a plan. How many of you guys have gotten to a trade? You did not have a plan. You just got in. Put that's me if that's you. Do I see you? Yes. And somebody said you don't have to use all of it, just portions. Investing without a plan. What about not seeking the correct mentors and coaches? How many of you all have made that mistake? Not seeking the correct mentors and coaches. What about buying and selling trades based on emotion? I see a lot of that's me's. I see a lot of that's me's. What about holding on to losing trades way too long? How many of you guys have some trades in your portfolio right now and they are really red, like really red, and you're just not letting go of it because you're not ready? I just don't want to, this is what I always hear. You know, I just don't want to sell it that low. I don't want to take the loss like that. You already have the loss. The loss is already there. You just need to sell it. <laughs> so, so it won't go down any lo lower. The loss, believe me, it's already there. It's showing you the red right there. It's showing you it's already there. <laughs> don't worry. I've done this too. I'm like, I'm just not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready to take the loss. It might come up tomorrow. It just, I'm hoping, anytime you hear I'm hoping from a trader, that is not good. I'm hoping that it's going to come back to up, you know, like that's, I'm just going to wait. It's already so low. It can go lower, guys. So holding on to a losing trade. And then the last thing, thinking that you have to buy and hold in order to make money. How many people would admit that's you? You think that you have to buy and hold in order to make money in trading, in investing in general. Well, secret number three is that that's actually not true. You can be an active investor. In order to create consistent income, like it's okay to get in and out of the market. Like our goal is to make $200 a day. And don't forget, like you can do that. You can actively invest to make the $200 a day. You don't have to use investing just for retirement. And it's literally this, the difference between like in real estate, there's flippers and then there's the buy and hold investors. And nobody tells real estate investors that they're wrong. Like, I can't believe you're flipping that house. Oh my God, you're going to actually make money in a month. You're going to buy it today, fix it up and then <laughs> sell it. I don't believe, it. you know, but everybody says that to traders. I can't believe that you're getting in and out of trades you're active investing. Oh my God. 
whatever. There's no, <laughs> there's no right or wrong way to invest. They're just different. They have different goals. Uh, buying a long-term real estate investor, they're going to hold it for retirement. A flipper is going to make their money fast. A long-term investor is going to buy and hold for retirement. A active investor is going to use money right now for income. Like the IRS deems active investors as people that are making money for or trading for income. And who doesn't want income? I do. Like even as an assistant principal, I wanted a side hustle. We all need extra income sometime, pay off bills, um, help our kids go to, to private schools. Like we just need, need income, right? So, and then this is just an example of, of what this could look like. So this was, this was, I think, I'm not sure if this was last year or the year before, but Facebook had started off the year at 175. And then it went up throughout the year to 220. But by the end of the year, I think this is actually 2018. By the end of the year, it ended at 162 and then even went lower than that. I think it went back down to like 150. So if you had been a buy and hold investor, you would have lost for the year. Because by the end of the year, it was lower than where it started at the beginning of the year. But if you were an active investor, you had several times to make some money and then even get in again, like see up here in, oh yeah, this is 2018. In the beginning of the year, it came up to 195 and then it came down in April. You could have, well, if you had sold up here at 195, you could have got back in when it came low to 150. And then after that, it zoomed up to 220. You could have sold and made some money up there. So there were several opportunities as an active investor to make money in this stock versus the longer term investor. They were in the hole just sitting on this all year because it went down by the end of the year. Does that make sense? So it's not so much that it's that one way of investing is better than the other. I think it's good to have skill sets in both. And trading in and out of a position can help you make consistent income, which even sometimes can lead to better returns than just buy and hold. That's why you need to learn this skill set. And that was one thing that um, this there, I have two Keisha's in my class. This Keisha actually said that um, learning how to actively invest is one of the best things I could have ever taught her. And let me see if I zoom into her message. I do. So she had told me that she had made it into the $1,000 a day club. She had sold Chipotle. And I told you we'd say no picture, no proof. So she sent me the actual pictures of it. And she told me that she had made $1,250. But in the text, the coolest thing is she says, um, just the fact that you've taught me not to hold on to trades. And excuse me, guys, I've seen almost all of my long term trades, which have been she, I've sold almost all of my long term trades, which been which has been such a blessing with the tariff mess. So at this time, um, we had just heard about all of the China tariffs. And so she had sold right before that. And then that way, when the tariff information came out, the, the market fell, she wasn't in any of the trades and she was able to get back in at the lower prices. And then she sent me another text message. And it was like, oh, my God, dearie, today is my birthday. <laughs> this is how I read it when she sent it to me. Oh, my God. Um, today is my birthday. And I had to share the absolute best birthday gift to myself was purchasing your class. Today I made $1,900 with Amazon. So she had sold, got into Amazon when it came down lower, and then was able to make some money on the way up. So just like active investing, neither one is, like I said, neither one is worse or better than the other. It's just a skill set that is really awesome to have so that you can make income. And then the last secret, how can you make $1,000 a day with, without spending hours on in in front of the computer? And that one is with, dun, 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 dun. Um, <laughs> that one is actually with charts. So during my time as an assistant principal, I used to spend hours researching stocks um, before I really learned how to read charts. And hours of time that I, like you said, I didn't really have until thankfully I learned how to read charts. So the coolest thing is that when you learn how to read a chart, it reduces the time that you need in order to research because the chart will tell you everything you need to know about when to get into a trade and when to get out of a trade. And that's at least my way because I'm a, um, I'm a technical analysis trader. 
So charts were a game changer for me because it just made so much sense and it was so much easier. So here's a pro tip, another pro tip. I want you to, I told you about your chart, your watch list earlier, but I want you to start limiting it down. I had one student when I first started working with her, she had a hundred stocks she was watching. And I was like, girl, how are you going to have time to look at all hundred of these stocks? And she told me, Terry, I don't. That's why I'm losing money. And I understood that. I really did. Um, (laughs) So I told her, okay, we're going to need to narrow this down. So let's narrow this watch list down. Like right here, I have 20 to 30 companies. But honestly, you could narrow it down to like five to 10 and get to know those companies really well. But if you first narrow down your watch list and then start getting familiar with their charts, it will so cut down your time. So for example, this was a time where I was at a conference and it was a FinCon conference, but I didn't have a lot of time because I was in sessions and I had been charting how much, like tracking how much I was making. And if you guys see down here, let's look at, let's look at this week right here where it says FinCon. This is the week I was in the conference. So I made a thousand dollars and keep this in mind. So I'm gonna ask you again. So I made $1,000, $1,010 here. Then I made $14, $10 here. So let me say this right. So I made $1,010 and then $1,410. And then I didn't trade Wednesday. And then I lost some money Thursday, which, hey, you're not going to win every day. So I lost $1,631 on Thursday. And that was actually strategic. I just didn't want to um, have a big loss. It's better to have a smaller loss than a big loss. And then Friday, I made $5,486. So my total for the week was $6,275, okay? So keep these in mind, $1,010 on Monday, $1,410 Tuesday, $5,400 on Friday, all right? Y'all remember these numbers? Now let's see how much time it took me to make those numbers. Oh, I didn't realize I could zoom in. Well, there you go. Um, (laughs) remember these numbers. All right. So I was looking at my app. I use TradeStation as my broker. So I was able to look at how much time I was spending on TradeStation. So for that overall week, the whole $6,000, I only spent four hours and 59 minutes trading to make that $6,000. And then this is how that shook out. So Monday, I spent 48 minutes trading to make $1,010. Then Tuesday, I spent an hour and 27 minutes, so less than an hour and a half to make $1,410. And then on this day, um, on Friday, I only spent one hour, 29 minutes in order to make that $5,400. So if you're at, if you're wondering, well, Terry, can I actually have a full-time job and still do this? Or how long does it take? Well, I need to be looking at it all day. The answer is no, you really don't. Like you can actually do this. You can make your goal in, in little time. And I know there's on the YouTube and on Instagram, there's students in here that have made like massive amounts in 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, an hour. And then even with these, this wasn't a consistent hour. This was me going into a session, come back, check my phone, because we can trade on our cell phone. And then, you know, check the charts, see if it's hit where I wanted it to hit, and then go back into the session. So it's not even a consistent hour and a half. So once you become a good trader, and you start really learning how to read those charts, it can take you a lot less time on a daily basis to actually make the money that you want to make. All right. Does that make sense? Swallowing how we can follow a small number of companies and then get familiar with the charts of those positions. And then that will lead us to less time trading. Put a four in the chat because it's secret number four, if that made sense. And this is actually Annette. Many of you guys might know Annette, but Annette is one of my first students too. She was one of the first students in my like first cohort two years ago. And she actually has sent me this message and she had made $2,500. She was so excited because it was the first time she'd ever made that much. And the coolest thing though, is if you look way down over here, let me see if I zoom into it. Way down over here, he says, I was done in 20 minutes. (laughs) 
I was done in 20 minutes. So she made $2,599 in 20 minutes. And you can see here from the chart, she did it because she was reading charts. And this is cool too. She actually did this as a short sale, which I told y'all about earlier. She did it on the way down. All right. Cool. So did y'all learn something? I've been talking forever. So now it's your turn to talk. <laughs> so I want to know how many of you guys, and let me know in the chat, how many of you guys are going to try this? Like how many of you are going to set up a trading plan so that you can pick good companies, set up stop, stop losses, read charts, run short sales and make money in any market? Like how many of you guys have I motivated you? Okay, Terry, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try to start doing this so I can start investing. And remember that the question I asked you earlier was, what if you started with just $200 and how that would change your life? So that extra $1,000 a week, $4,000 a month, like how would that change your life? Now tell me, how many of you guys actually want me to help you with this? You're like, I want to know how to do this, but I'm going to need some help. Let me know. Anybody in the chat like, Terry, now what do I do for your help? <laughs> I'm going to look in the chat. Okay, good. I see some people raising their hands. They're like, yes, yes, me. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> so you guys, I want to know. All right. So let me then, let me show you guys how to get my help. So let me make this bigger again. I just had to check the chat. I was like, does anybody in here need my help on this? So the way that you do this, and hopefully it didn't freeze on me. There it goes, it's back. Okay, so one of the cool things, and let me share this with you before I, before I share how you can get my help. But um, if you guys see right here in the red shirt, do y'all see Joanne? Can y'all see her? Um, Joanne had actually spent $45,000 on a different investing course before she came to me. And when she came to me, she had spent the $45,000 and never took a trade because she said she just didn't understand from what they were teaching her and she was scared. And once I started working with her, she sent me this message and it's really hard for y'all to see it here, but she sent me a message and she made her first $2,777 in a day. And she was so excited. <laughs> she's like I did it oh my god but there are going to be a lot of courses out there there's a lot of people and I'm sure that you're wondering like well why Terry would I want to work with you and I think it's things like this it's when like Joanne paid $45,000 to somebody else and never took a trade um I'm a good teacher like I came from 10 years of education and that's my superpower like that's what um, that's what my students say about me. They say that you're a good teacher. So like here, one of my students says, Terry's an incredible instructor. She's one of the most patient people I've ever encountered, has a command of her subject matter that inspires confidence, hope, competency, and incremental success in stock trading and in life. Terry's been there to answer my questions prior to becoming her student. And of course, since becoming her student. She is gracious and humble and accepting compliments and praise. I love her infectious giggle. Aw, I haven't read that in a little while. Appreciate it. And then this is Uche here. And Uche, same thing. Terry's a natural born teacher. Her ability to simplify the complexities of the stock market is so very much appreciated. This is the first time I'm able to easily navigate the stock market, understand the charts and make trades and all this in only eight weeks. I am grateful for all the time she has devoted to her students in this class and her endless patience to explain things clearly, encourage us to make trades using the strategies and helping us navigate through our issues or questions we have. I'm looking forward to the advanced class and taking your trading to the next level, taking my trading to the next level. That's, that's, what, that's what my students say. I'm a teacher. And that's what makes me stand out. Um, and remember, you don't have to have a lot of money to start. This is Carleen. You can start with any amount. And so here, here's what I have to offer. Um, and in comparison, what I have to offer, usually people go to university to get this. Like this would be something that you would go get your MBA to learn how to invest. And oftentimes, 
people that get their MBAs will tell you they still don't invest. Like I have friends in my course that went to Harvard Business School, um, Stanford Business School, like every school, <laughs> and they still come and learn from me how to actually invest in the stock market. And that's when they start seeing results. Like they are make it into our thousand dollar in a day club and they've made the results to actually improve their finances um, after coming to me and after spending the 80,000 in, in a university. Or you could go to a trade school and I know these costs are going up like what Jolene paid the 45,000. You can go to a school where you do like a week long something seminar um, and they charge you 45,000. You guys have even seen, they often do this with real estate classes too. You go in for a weekend, they tell you, pay us $45,000. We'll have somebody coach you for one day. And then you are out there to fend on your own. That's what they do. Um, or you have my course and I'll show you everything that's in it. But my course is an eight week curriculum where we're walking you through all the different things that I taught you today and more. So how do you pick good companies? How do you put in the right risk management to protect yourself from losing? How do you make sure that you're reading charts? Like how do you do that right? So you get in and out at the right place. How do you make sure you have a trading plan so that you're not trading with emotions, but with discipline? Well, now how do you make money on the way down? How do you make sure to look at gaps in Globex trading? How do you use options to take it to the next level? We do stocks and options in the class. So this is LaQuery and Gerald. They both made into the $1,000 a day club plus more. Both of them now are in like the $10,000. Well, I know LaQuery for sure is in the $10,000 a day club. So here's the thing with pricing. So I had to have a, make a choice. I had two options with pricing. So I could either option one, I could price the program really cheaply and share this opportunity with as many people as possible. However, to tell you the truth, if I priced it too cheaply, then that wouldn't give me a real incentive to stay engaged. Because if, if people aren't paying very much, then I'd rather go trade than to actually teach people. Or I can require a little higher investment, um, but give more of my time and resources into the course to support you and to support the students. And so I chose option number two. So I know I haven't said the price yet, but even if all this course did was allow you to learn a skill that would generate income for the rest of your life, would it be worth it? If you had a skill that you could do to make income the rest of your life, or if you could make an extra $200 a day, would it be worth it? Remember, that's $48,000 extra a year that I just taught you how to do. Or if you could confidently trade your 401k, would it be worth it? Just imagine if your 401k that's currently making like 5% a year was now making 10% a year because you're trading it. Would it be worth it? And then what about if you just had more quality time with your family? Maybe you didn't have to work as much overtime because you're covering it yourself now. Would it be worth it? So this is, this is the course and this is how I can help you. This is what I've put together and it's, it's my best effort to make sure that you, you're going to be successful. And that at least you have the best tools to be a good investor. Because I think, honestly, that's what's, what's the problem. We get in there, we don't know what we're doing, and we think we're just going to figure it out. Like, okay, I know I've heard people are doing well in investing. I opened an account. I'm just going to figure it out. But while you're figuring it out, that's wasting time because you're losing money. You're all over YouTube looking at everybody's videos and getting confused you think you understand it when you see their video on YouTube and then you go do it yourself and you're confused because you don't have support. So this is what I got. Um, let me see what questions you all have. And our students are killing it. This one was just uh, another one of my students, Cynthia. And she just said she was so excited. She had um, almost made 7,000 in four days. And she was just like, no, woulda, coulda, shouldas. I was away from FOMO. Like, thank you, Terry, for just helping me change my mindset. And she's now trading her retirement as well. So she was like, tell them that I'm trading my retirement account now. And I made a 273% return on one of my, my investments. So, I mean, who, whose retirement is working as hard as you would work for yourself, right? So one-time payment or there are payment plans. Don't forget it's down here, investwithterry.com. 
And yeah, that's the course. That's trade and travel. So any questions? So let me escape from here, investwithterry.com, and then go to your questions. I'm going to stop sharing so I can see. All right. So let me look at YouTube. Was that helpful? Did you guys learn a lot? I feel like I tried to make sure that you at least had some, some tools in your tool belt today, like how to protect yourself from losing, how to make sure you're picking better companies, um, just how to make sure that you're thinking about investing right. The fact that you can do active investing instead of just buy and hold. And you all, yes, please pick like and press share on this video. I hear that helps the algorithm subscribe to the channel. Good, Curtis. And Curtis says, yes, you're giving us value. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Napoleon said, realistically, what account size do you need to, to start making $200 a day? Well, in the beginning, your goal is going to be 1% of your cash amount. So if you're trying to make $100 a day, then you'll need $10,000 in your account. If you're trying to make $200 a day, you'll need $20,000 in your account. Now, I'll tell you the truth. We already saw that somebody had a thousand. I showed you a, a testimony of a, someone had nine hundred and eighty-six dollars in their account, and they made eighty dollars. So you actually can perform a lot better than the one percent as you become a better investor. But just to have you know expectations that are, that are realistic in the beginning, I'm going to want you to try to go for one percent of your cash amount on a regular basis. And then as your skills grow, you'll actually be able to make higher percentages and you'll probably be able to have a bit bigger account. Okay. And thank you for all my students that are in here answering questions. I appreciate you. I love you guys. Yes, yes, Wendy. The students in the chat are awesome. It's so cool. I can't believe you guys are still awake. <laughs> Hey, Nina. So Nina's our director of student success. She's, um, she's in the chat too. Oh, I love you too. All right. Well, guys, I'm trying to see. I don't want to miss any of your questions. But I will say that someone's probably going to ask, well, Terry, can people make money earlier than, than the eight weeks? Because it's usually an eight-week program. Yes. So after your first two weeks, I'm going to give you homework to start trading. And oftentimes people will start making money right then. But I think as you learn more, you're going to become better and better at making money. So give yourself about at least eight weeks to learn the curriculum and then give yourself even more time to become consistent as a trader. It's not a get rich quick plan. This is a skill set like learning how to learn a new language. It takes time to get fluent, but then once you have it, this is something you can use for life. Okay, good. So John says international accounts with TradeStation, they do cover the UK. So all of my students in England um, and Germany, all of them are covered. They also cover um, South Korea. You can use TradeStation there. So many places in, in Asia and in China, you can use it. You can use it in South Africa. So most places you can use it. We don't have um, a broker though in Canada. So some we have many Canadian students because they can still use the curriculum, but we use a different broker in Canada. Mm -hmm. And then someone told me recently too, they can't use the broker in Nigeria. So we're, we're looking for a different broker there too. If you are in the States though, and you open it here and then you go travel, you can use, you could use TradeStation wherever you just need it on your cell phone. So you should be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Rod. Rod Man says, Terry is the real deal. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, uh, Shimsa says, it's, de it's definitely life-changing. Yes. Shout out to Annette who's here. Love the trade and travel signs. Hey, Stephanie, welcome to the course. Stephanie says she'll be signing up. Uh, no, I don't use specific indicators, Napoleon asked. Um, I'm using formations in the chart. And Anthony says, do I trade futures? No, I just trade stocks and options. So in trading, there's four main asset classes. 
Um, so there's stocks and options, but then there's futures, which is commodities like wheat, soybean, oil. And then there's Forex, which is currencies, like the difference between the Aussie dollar versus the American dollar or the Japanese yen. So um, I trade stocks and options. That's my, my specialty. Mm -hmm. And I'm an active investor. So I don't do longer term positions. I'm looking at more short term. How do you make money in, you know, a week to a month or a couple of days? All right, guys. Well, it is late. Oh, wow. It is, it is late here. Let me let you guys go. Thank you guys so much for staying on with me, both YouTube and Instagram. Thank you guys. Y'all have a great evening and I'll see you in the cohort. I'll see you in the next class. All right. I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Bye.